Well, hello to you. It's day seven of our X challenge. Uh, yesterday was a special day. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to our special message. I hope it was encouraging to you. It was great to hear from you uh, in many ways about how you are handling uh, uh, this situation that we're in, how you are thinking about it, uh, encouraging one another. So thank you so much for doing that. Uh, it was certainly an encouragement to me. This X challenge is really all about empowering you uh, to have uh, impactful spiritual conversations with the people around you, your friends, your family, uh, your neighbors, uh, whoever God has placed into your life. And this is just a moment of inspiration, a moment of conversation, um, and and to help you to do that. And so this X challenge is about tuning in 10 a.m., for the next seven days, and then have a conversation with one person today, invite them to join the X challenge, and then report your conversation at connectuschurch.org slash X challenge. Now, remember, you can join the Bible app reading plan, which I encourage you to do. Uh, the link is in the description to this video, and you can, uh, see how we're doing with reporting the conversations that uh, we are having. And the X challenge is a multiplication challenge. It's a 14-day multiplication movement of people connecting with others and sharing the hope of Jesus with them. And so we come and watch this for inspiration to come together. Uh, we go out and have a conversation with someone God has placed in our life. We invite them to join the challenge and then we report those conversations that we had. The reason we're doing this is because uh, as we think about the way the virus, coronavirus spreads, uh, the same really method is used as we talk about the spreading of any message, especially the message of Jesus. Uh, because we're doing this this morning, uh, my life is the way that it is this morning, and many Christians who, you know, followers of Jesus uh, is the way their life is this morning because of what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. Uh, what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, uh, no other person has ever done. Uh, he, he kept saying to his followers, I'm going to die, they're going to kill me on a cross, and three days later, I'm going to rise again. I'm going to come back from the dead. And if anyone predicts their death and resurrection and pulls it off, um, that's someone worth paying attention to. And from the very beginning, Jesus appeared to the people in his life, his, his followers. He appeared to many, many people. And as his followers were writing down what uh, they had seen, what they had experienced, what happened was those people that were reading the letters and were having these conversations, they could go back and fact check the reality of the resurrection with the people that were mentioned in these writings. And so if you read in one of Paul's letters, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it's all about this resurrection and he details who and when and where and how this all works. And you're reading it and you could go and say, oh, you know, hey, so-and-so, you saw Jesus resurrect. Is that true? And they'd be like, yeah, it is true. And so before the Bible, the, the collection of documents that we have today that you know, we call the Bible, before it was put together, the, the message of Jesus, the message of someone who claimed to be the Son of God, who claimed to be God, who, who, who predicted his death and resurrection and pulled it off, the message spread. It spread by word of mouth. It spread through families. It spread through friends. It spread as God was working in his people through the person of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit to give the message to those people that God placed into their life. And so uh, it's really this idea of multiplication, of spreading the message, of spreading the good news, of spreading what Jesus has done. It's been the way of Christianity from the very beginning. And 
Uh, as, as we think about church, as we think about being followers of Jesus, we want to keep this movement going because it's good news for everybody, no matter what we're facing in life. And so we want to share it, we want to spread it, and that is what this challenge is all about. Now, um, if you are following along on the reporting aspect of things, we're, we're not, we could be doing better, <laughs> um, but that's why it's a challenge. We're, we're challenging ourselves these days to see how well we can do. Uh, reporting a conversation is a little strange, I get that, and uh, expecting a doubling multiplication rate every day uh, is probably a little a little intense, uh, a little crazy, but it, again, it was a challenge, and we're going to push through, and we're going to learn from it, and hopefully uh, we will be better as a church, as a people, uh, as a result of going through something like this, and so remember, you're going to have a conversation with somebody today. I encourage you to ask them today, what is one thing that you are thankful for? So, And ask them, when did you see God show up in your life in a big way? Uh, we talked about that yesterday in my message a little bit, and we'll see that in our devotional time this morning in Habakkuk. Uh, what is one thing, one way that you've seen God show up in your life? And so... Um, before we jump into that real quick, I'm going to hop onto my Facebook page here and I'm going to share this on my timeline. They never let you do that <laughs> before you start the video. Oh, come on. Come on. All right, here we go. X challenge day seven start. Cool. All right. So, what is one thing that you are thankful for? One way that you've seen God show up in your life in a big way. Um, yesterday, I did the special message. And it was awesome to read about how God had shown up in people's lives uh, over, over the years. Uh, someone was so thankful for their children, uh, for answered prayer, for when their family had to move, uh, God was there with them. Uh, through a terrible, horrible situation in life, there was hope and restoration. Uh, they're thankful for time with family now and friends. Uh, a time when they broke the law and God showed them mercy. Uh, they were thankful for a place to live and, and being able to continue to work. Uh, those, were, those were awesome things to hear and to be encouraged by, that God is at work and He is uh, real and He is, is moving and working in this situation. And so as we jump into this devotional again today, uh, I encourage you to follow along in the Bible reading plan, this devotional. Remember, if you think God has forgotten you, then you have forgotten who God is. An anonymous quote. I love anonymous quotes. Oh, when in the valley, sometimes I simply need to remember. I return to who I know God is. Habakkuk's third chapter starts like a worship song that acknowledges how hard life is and yet remembers all God has done. It's another step, a really big one, in the journey out of the valley. Habakkuk prays, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in your day, in our time. Make them known in wrath. Remember mercy. That's Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. And Craig Rochelle, the writer of this devotional, writes, I remember when I was in college and more lost than you could ever imagine. And I called out on the name of Jesus, asking him, no, almost daring him, if you're real and if you are there, do something. Uh, he was a big partier. He was uh, involved in all the fraternities. He was a big uh, athlete, a popular guy. Uh, I encourage you to check out his story sometime. Uh, but he says he falls down on his knees as one person, and then when I stood up, I was a completely different person. 
uh, he goes on in the messages that he shares to share on that particular day, uh, he got up and felt like uh, he needed to start a Bible study. And I think, I think if I'm remembering correctly, uh, he needed to start a Bible study because it would be like good look for him um, because he had been so uh, messed up, so crazy, so like, I don't know, I guess in trouble uh, with the school or, or the college he was at. And he's like, I just need to start a Bible study. It would look good for me. And so he did. I mean, he invited his friends, his friends uh, from the sports teams and that he knew in the fraternity. And he's like, we're going to start a Bible study. And then he realized the only problem is uh, I don't have a Bible. And so, so he tells the story of how he's, he's walking to, I could think of where he was going to have a Bible study. And then a man showed up. And a man showed up who gave him a Bible. And it was just this like life changing day for him where he realized, oh my goodness, like there is something to this God thing. And uh, he later learned out that this guy worked for an organization called the Gideons and it's their job, their, their role, their desire to give Bibles out to as many people as possible. If you go to a hotel, you'll see Bibles there placed by the Gideons. Um, it's just what they do, and God used them in this particular way to bless this guy who went on and has gone on to be a pastor, and he's the pastor of the church that created this Bible app, and they've given away you know, hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of copies of this app for free uh, because somebody gave the pastor Craig the Bible for free on his college campus the day that he was going to start this Bible study and didn't have one. So God showed up and came through in his life and is in an incredible, incredible way. And I, I just love, I love that story. Uh, he goes on to cite, uh, I think, two more examples here or three more examples of God coming through in his life. He says, I remember how God brought Amy into my life. I cherish her and the gift she was and cont continues to be from God. That's his wife. Um, and if you're married or uh, you, you might remember when God brought that person into your life or you're dating and, and you have that special person in your life, a special friend, uh, that is a special moment that God brings those people into your life. Uh, and that's a, a, a really neat thing. And then when you have children, of course, that's another big important thing in life. And Craig says, when I, then I remember our daughter Katie was born and how when she was about three years old, this is a funny story, Katie got into some poison ivy and ended up covered in a rash from head to toe. Before bed that night, she told me, Daddy, Jesus is going to heal me because I prayed. I remember thinking, wow, that's really sweet, but I don't know what's, what we're going to do if she still has that rash tomorrow. Um, he's thinking, wow, you know, she's just three years old. What does she know about, you know, she doesn't know anything about <laughs> the way rashes work. There's no way this is going to be going to happen. And then he writes, I remember the next morning, Katie ran into our room, buck naked and giddy with joy, shouting, look, look, he healed me. <laughs> I can just picture that and just the shock on, on dad's face when that was happening. The rash was completely gone. I remember when Amy and I were young, Craig writes, just starting out in ministry and we didn't have any money. We prayed together, God, we don't know where food's coming from tomorrow. The next day we received a refund check in the mail what do you do when you're in the valley do you remember what god has you remember what god has done and you dare to believe that he's done it before he will do it again and that's really the belief i mean you can look back at the evidence of god doing something in your life and in your world and you you, you love that you cherish that your mercy i see god moving from Edom and the Holy One coming from Mount. His brilliant splendor fills the heavens and the earth is filled with His praise. He coming is as bright as, as the sunrise. Rays of light flash from heavens where His power... Uh-oh, I got froze. <laughs> I think we're back. We'll see how long it lasts. All right. Let's keep going. Hello. All right, so God is 
on the move. God, Habakkuk is thanking God for all that he's done, his amazing works. And then if, in this chapter, I'm not sure if we'll get there tomorrow. We might. I'm not sure how God led Israel, his people, through the sea. And we'll see that in a second, how that was like a defining moment in the history of Israel. As, as they were wondering, is God working in this world? Is God working in my life? Is God there? Is God who he says he is? They had this defining moment that they could look back on. Yes, God did this for us. God did this for our people. God did this for our country. And they believed in that God was going to do it again. And uh, at, at the end, when, I, when this is over, I'm going to post a song by Elevation Worship called Do It Again, which is just all about this faith step in believing. And I encourage you to check that out today. So Habakkuk chapter 3, and now Psalm 77. There's a lot of verses here, but I think it'd be good to think through and meditate on now. He says, I cry out to God, yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for his help. The book of Psalms is a great place to turn to when we're trying to find words to put to the feelings that we have in our heart and in our mind. Uh, the book of Psalms just puts uh, clear words of, of praise, of, of, of suffering, of, of whatever we're feeling about, whatever we're feeling, whatever we're going through. Uh, the book of Psalms puts words to those things. And so the guy writing this says, You don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days long since ended. My nights with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has rejected me forever? Never again kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Have his promise? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed on his compassion? And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me. But that I recall all you've done, O Lord, and I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. And there's that little phrase again that we talked about yesterday in our special, special message. This guy writing this is saying, Is this my fate? God has turned against me. But then I recall all that you've done, O Lord. It's like wherever we're at, whatever we're thinking, wherever we are, but God, we can remember God. We can turn to God, and he is there for us, ready for us. He says, Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the Red Sea saw you, O God, its waters looked and trembled. The sea quaked to its very depths. The clouds poured down rain. A thunder rumbled in the sky. Your arrows of lightning flashed. Your thunder roared from the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled. Your road led through the sea. Your pathway through the mighty waters. A pathway no one knew was there. You led your people along the road like a flock of sheep with Moses as their shepherds. That moment of being led through the Red Sea was a place to go. Oh man, we're, we're not going to make it this morning. Our internet's not going to work. Uh, when they had no place to go, they remembered that God made a way when there was seemingly no way. God led them through the sea. There was a pathway through the mighty waters. And I just, I'm encouraged by that. No matter what we're facing, no matter what 